Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 14 of the Best Day Ever podcast. This is a podcast about my crafting journey, but it is also where we celebrate with you all the reasons why crafting every day makes for the best day ever. My name is Trish, and I can be found on Instagram and Ravelry as Tie Dye Diva. Show notes can be found uh, in the description box below, as well as in the Ravelry group, which is also named Best Day Ever Podcast Group. Let's see, today is Friday, July 26, and I, as usual, am coming to you from my home in the state of Maryland. So welcome, welcome in, and it's been a couple of months since I've recorded, and since that time, I have received several new subscribers, so thank you all for subscribing and tuning in as I share with you um, what I've been busy working on in my crafting world. Uh, last episode, I talked about a giveaway that I wanted to, um, to, to host, and I will be telling you about that in a few minutes. I also have some finished objects in knitting, um, as well as some natural dyeing that I've been doing that I'm really, really excited to share with you, um, and a couple of whips that I've started since I last recorded. So I hope you are relaxed. I hope you have your favorite craft um, with you and maybe your favorite beverage. I am having some hot tea today. Um, there is something going on with my throat. I had a cold about a week ago, and um, it's just this cold that just keeps leaving and coming back, leaving and coming back. So I went to the doctor and I was able to get some nasal sprays and some cough syrups and um, an inhaler because apparently I'm having some difficulty um, breathing because of all the colds and um, the changes in temperatures. Oh my goodness, guys. Uh, last week, our temperatures rose well above 100 degrees. It was so hot. And so I think the combination of going, um, being outside in the really, really hot temperatures and then coming into the air conditioning, it just wreaks all kind of havoc with your, um, with your respiratory system. So that's why my voice is sounding <laughs> really really bad so I apologize for that and I'm hoping that having this tea will help it to be um, really soothing so I hope you have a like I said a nice beverage and um, you're crafting as I share with you all the things I've been working on but before I do that um I want to talk about a giveaway that I'm hosting so about a few months back um I guess I would say back in December, I reached several milestones. Um, milestones on Instagram, where I um, am now at about 2,000 um, followers. So thank you for joining me um, there as I um, share mostly about crafting um, and also cooking, which I also consider a craft. So that's pretty much what you're going to find on my Instagram page. So it was exciting to reach over 2,000 subscribers. Additionally, um, the podcast reached over 500 subscribers. This was back in December, I believe. And I wanted to host a giveaway, but as many of you know, I had a lot of things going on um, with the family around that time. So months and months went on, and I just never got around to doing a milestone appreciation giveaway. So I'm finally getting to do that, and I'm just really excited to share with you um, the giveaway that I will be hosting um, starting right now. So these are all the things, all the things that I will be um, giving away to one individual. So um, let's see, let's start from this side. So I've got a little packet of soak for your, um, your knitted and crochet garment. It's unscented just in case you prefer it unscented. Um, this is also just this cute little project bag that I found from um, my local Joann's. They were on sale and I snagged a couple of them because I thought they'd make really, really good, um, really good gifts and giveaways for the podcast. Um, on this side, I'm just going to include this little notions pouch and I'm going to fill it up with um, probably a couple of stitch markers and a couple of my favorite um, bags of tea. Uh, what else do I want to talk about next? Um, of course, yarn will be included. 
this is a really special skein. I actually purchased this from the Needles Up event at um, for the Maryland Sheep and Wool for this year. It's by Olan, all the way from Ireland. And she was one of the vendors at the Needles Up event. And the color is Maryland. So, of course, I purchased this for myself because, as you know, I love orange. But look at that skein. Isn't that beautiful? But since I don't have any immediate plans um, to knit with this, I decided to put it in the giveaway. And then I was looking through my stash and I found this beautiful skein of black yarn, which is from Ba. And I believe Ba is an independent dyer out of California, but I will confirm that. The color is black pearl. And I thought it would go beautiful um, with the skein of Olan in the color Maryland. If you wanted to do something, um, some color work, maybe a color work shawl or color work cow. And I'm also going to include this beautiful skein of, um, this is a merino alpaca and I think it's about 132 yards. And this is one of the skeins that I dyed naturally. And I believe this was dyed with black beans, if I'm not mistaken. This was last, some of last year's natural dyeing. It's absolutely beautiful, and I think it would make a really nice hat for a baby. Um, and finally, something that I'm really excited to share. Let me set this down. I'm also going to include these, this bar of uh, wool wash soap from Tufts Woolens as well as um, a hand and body balm, both from Tufts Woolens. And the scent is, yes, North Shore. It smells like the ocean. It is so nice. This was actually um, what I picked up for myself at the, um, the Needles Up event for Maryland Sheep and Wool um, from her booth. And as I was checking out, she said, Trish, why don't you go ahead and grab a couple of items to give away on your podcast? Because you're, you're, you're such a loyal, loyal follower of me and um, always speaking so well of, of the product. So just go ahead and grab two things that you can use for a podcast giveaway. So I was completely blown away and so appreciative. So Martha, thank you so, so much for this. Um, these two items that I can also, will also include in the giveaway. I'm also going to include this pin from Othella of Aris Knits. Thanks, Othella. So to enter the giveaway, you simply have to be a subscriber of the podcast and just leave a message here for this episode. Um, no particular message. If you want to share something you're excited about on your crafting journey, you can share that. If you want to just give a comment on um, something I talk about today, feel free to do that. Or just say hello. Just say hello and tell me what state you're, um, you're, um, you're listening in from or what country you're listening in from, for that matter. Um, I have, um, there have been a couple of international <laughs> subscribers um, in the past few months, which is really, really exciting. So um, all are welcome in this crafting space. And again, thank you so much for joining me here. To start out the podcast, um, let's talk about a couple of items that I finished since I last recorded. So the first thing we want to talk about is um, I made another head Dana, you guys. I absolutely love this pattern. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that... Um, I've just been singing the praises of this pattern and it's basically a um it's a hat and it's a cow but it's a hat in the shape of a band a bandana so it's a hat dana is the name of the pattern I feel so rusty since I haven't recorded for a while so bear with me hat dana is the name of the pattern the designer is Benice Bayron and um she designed this I just think it's absolutely clever so basically it is a hat in the shape of a bandana which is what I'm trying to say um, it's basic stockinette stitch with a, um, a ripped cuff 
and there is a really nice um, cable pattern going down the center of uh, the hat dana and you've also got some really simple lace uh, in between those cables and it's finished off with these cute little tassels that hang down the back of the hat dana i'm apologizing again for the lighting it's not the best today i thought that recording in my living room with the um, light coming in from the um the front window would be really nice but i'm really it's kind of overcast today so um i apologize for that i am working on better lighting if any of you podcasters out there have any suggestions i'm actually recording on my um my ipad today i just purchased a new ipad um because i needed one <laughs> i think i had i think i had the original ipad from when ipads first came out and it was a refurbished original so it was definitely time. I think um, the recording quality is going to be really good here, but the lighting, um, not so much. So if you have any suggestions for um, for lighting, I'm thinking about some umbrella lights and maybe that would be really helpful. So we'll see. So just bear with me today. Better lighting is coming. I'm going to try the hat Dana on so you can see how cute it is. Um, let me take this scarf off because I don't need two scarves on. Um, so you basically put it on like you would put on any other hat. You, so this is the front of the hat Dana where the, um, the cables are. And that's the part you're going to lay on your head here. And then you're going to just adjust it however you want to wear it um, behind your ear. I tend to prefer my hats behind my ears as opposed to over my ears. It just seems so uncomfortable to me. And just adjust, adjust the back so that it will lay flat. And there, there we go. I've got a ton of hair under here. So, but yeah, that still works. So yeah, that's the way the hat Dana does. This color is so bright. It's really clashing with the sun. But I love it. I absolutely love it. I wonder whether I should keep this on for the podcast. Maybe. So. Yeah, why not? So anyway, I love it. I absolutely love it. And this this is also a skein that I dyed um, naturally last year. And I believe I dyed this with da a combination of dandelion and turmeric. And it's such a beautiful color, and I don't know if I can repeat it exactly, um, but I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going to try. And the issue is that, of course, dandelions are only around, at least where I live, in the early, early late spring. I would say probably early spring to late spring, so we'll see. But yes, I love this pattern. This is my second one, and I got a feeling it's not going to be my last. Um, it's just cute. I think it's just so cute and so functional. So let's see how it works. It is a summer day, but when she first came out with this pattern, I, I told her, I said, you know, this is it's perfect because now us knitters can wear our knits even in the summertime. So... Um, I'm going to put this to the test while recording this podcast to see if I don't get too, too hot. I'm going to toss that off to the side. Okay, so the second thing I have to share with you is um, a sweater that I finished. This was actually a test knit for um, by Knit and Crochet. So this, the, the, let me just tell you the name of the pattern. The name of the pattern is the As If T by Shay Johnson and um, the As If Tea was actually, it came out um, several months ago, but in a limited amount of sizes. And so Shay um, so graciously um, worked very hard to offer the pattern in an extended um, sizes. And I have always loved this pattern, um, but I was kind of hesitant to, cause I didn't know whether I would be able to make the adjustments myself. So when she said she was looking for test knitters 
for the larger sizes, I jumped on that. So let me just share with show you what this this sweater is all about. It's basically a mohair and um, Aran weight combination crop sweater. And as you can see, it has this cute little, almost like a corset type um, shaping on the front that is done simply with, um, with how you knit with either the mohair um, by itself or by knitting with the mohair and the wool together. So the yarn that I chose to knit this with is it's an Aran weight. And I'm not sure if she still has this base or not, but the um, the base is called Skyline Erin, and the color is Waterfield. And I believe I got this a few years back in, um, she did an accessories club, and I got three skeins of this as a part of the club. And I was just so excited when I realized I had this in my stash because it's, um, I don't think I've ever been able to knit a sweater, at least in my size, with just 520 yards of, uh, of, 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 um, of yarn. Huh, excuse me, guys, today. Apparently, I'm just a bit loopy. Um, so, that's the color of the wool. And then the color for the uh, mohair portion is the number 16, dark purple. And this is uh, Drops uh, Mohair Silk. And it's this is definitely showing up exactly how deep and beautiful that color is. And um, it's finished with some simple ribbing on the sleeve, which are short sleeves, um, as well as the neckline. Uh, let's see, what else can I say? Oh, and I also had some NFC Loft, which is a mohair silk blend in a, um, you know, I didn't put the exact color. I'm not even going to try to guess it, but I love this color so much. So I decided to do some color blocking and put, um, I held one strand of the purple along with a strand of the grayish purplish brown Loft for the back. So the front is all purple. And the back, um, just to under the, just to above the sleeve is uh, the loft as well as the uh, drops held together. I hope I'm making sense. <laughs> I just love this sweater. It's so beautiful. I'm going to insert a, a picture of me wearing this sweater here. took my son um, took the, those pictures um, of me wearing the sweater it was so hot that day it was so hot and I wasn't feeling well so um, I think I've looked kind of loopy in those pictures as well but um, yeah so I love 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 this I can see me getting lots of wear out of this um, I plan to wear it is a crop sweater for me not as you can see in the pictures not um, extremely cropped but um, more crop than I usually do for a sweater. So yes, I'm definitely looking forward to getting lots of wear out of this sweater this winter. Again, this is the As If, As If Tea by Shay Johnson. So, I think those are the only two things I've actually finished since, hello. I'm good. Did I walk in? Did I walk in? Mm-hmm. I did. Mm-hmm. You want to say hello to the people? Sure. Oh, man. Sorry, my bad. Time is of the essence. You were edited, right? Maybe. <laughs> this is 
is my son, Armani. You can take your glasses off so we can see. No, I'm gonna leave them off. You smell sweaty. You had a hard day today. Yeah, I did, yeah. Okay. Go take a shower. Okay, go shower. Love you too. For sure. <laughs> Okay, so let's move on into works in progress. Um, the first work in progress is actually a new cast on since I last recorded, and that is the Lavelli Tea by Caitlin Hunter. Um, this is a complete impulse cast on. I was just just fell in love with all of the um, the the finished objects that I saw on Ravelry as well as Instagram, and I said, you know what? Let me just let me just knit this. I just had to knit it. Anyway, you've probably seen it. You know it. It's this cute little number here. It's knit from the bottom up in a two-color um, combination. And then at the, this portion here is where you start introducing the main color. Um, and as you can see, it features some ribbing there on the, um, the top neckline, drop sleeves, and... Um, just a little bit of that first uh, contrast color there on the edge of the sleeve. So, the colors that I chose for my Novelli are, let me hold it up here. The darker green is uh, by Plucky Knitter. It's Plucky Feet, and the color is Manderley. This was one, this was one of the, um, the club colors from a couple of years ago. And the bluish green, and this is pretty accurate, at least from what I'm seeing, is Thank You Note, which is also Plucky Feet. And the main color is Caramel Kiss. And I'm going to hold this up and hoping, yeah, that's pretty, pretty accurate. I'm not going to hold it up too close so you can see my <laughs> terrible color work. <laughs> not terrible. We are always our worst critics, right? Um, I am really enjoying this knit so far. I'm at the point now where I have um, divided for the um, the back and um, the sleeve. I'm gonna follow the the sizing and the um, the measurements exactly like the pattern I'm calls for, which for me is gonna be quite cropped. So I'm kind of taking a chance because. Um, the As If T comes to probably just in the middle of my abdomen, whereas this one probably is going to come maybe to my belly button or maybe a little bit higher. But I do intend to wear this over top of um, tunic tops as well as long dresses. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try it out. I'm hoping it's not a fail because... The thing is, if I want to lengthen it, the only place to lengthen it really is at this point. So I'm at the point in which the pattern says to um, to cut off the, um, or to separate for the sleeves. So um, I'm hoping that um, it all works out. It'll work out. It'll work out. And if it's too short, I'm just gonna block, block it until it fits. I'm gonna make it work. I'm gonna work it out because I've spent a lot of time on this. You know what? I shouldn't say a lot of time. I'm actually surprised at how quickly I was able to um, to knit this up. This is in fingering weight, and I am knitting, like I said, one of the larger sizes. So even at that, it's it's a pretty quick knit, and um, I'm really enjoying it so far. So. Um, yeah, so that's the Novelli T. The um, ribbing section is knit on a US 2. The body is knit on a US 3. Um, the color work section, I did decide to knit on a US 4. I said I was going to try that uh, technique um, because a lot of knitters have suggested that to go up a size for color work since your color work tends to pull in a lot of times and I know that's the case with me as well so I tried that and I hope it doesn't um, alter the size too much um, so we, we, we will see this is one of the very few sweaters I've I knit from the bottom up most, most of the time I knit from the top down because I feel really comfortable with uh, 
sizing and making size adjustments with the top down sweater so this this is this is a leap of faith as well as the as if tea they're both leaps of faith and hoping that they work out but i just love this color combination i love it so so much so um really enjoying working on that and this is hanging out in my um fat squirrel fibers bag I'm gonna and yes i did intentionally um pick this bag from my project bag stash because i knew it would match the project because that's a part of the fun of making and i don't think i told you what the base is for the main color i told you the color the color is caramel kiss but this is a new to me base from the plucky knitter and it is so low it is a i believe it's 80 percent um 80% merino and 20% silk. So here they are. As you can see, one, well, maybe you can't tell from here, but one is a tad bit lighter than the other. So I am alternating skeins and it's working out really, really well. So yes, that's my Novelli tee. And um, now that I've separated for the sleeves, I can um, do some more mindless knitting of stockinette stitch, just going back and forth on that okay so I'm also going to share with you a new pair of socks that I cast on since I last recorded um, and I'm really excited about these because this is not just a new pair of socks but also new to me technique this is my first time knitting socks two at a time so look at there they are they are this I'm really really enjoying this um, I've always wanted to knit a pair of socks two at a time my usual method is magic loop um, but I've been watching other podcasters and other knitters really enjoying um, making their socks two at a time and I do think that in theory um, you can get done with a pair of socks a lot quicker um, I don't generally suffer from second sock syndrome when I finish one I usually immediately cast on for the new one for the next one because um, I just I don't want to get into that habit of just having just single socks so anyway I did give it a shot um, my issue with magic loop and two at a time in the past was that I just could not wrap my brain around the cast on um, for two socks on the same needle but I was scrolling through YouTube and I came across a tutorial by Mina Phillips, who is the knitting expat, I believe on Instagram, Ravelry, and YouTube. So I will link to the video that um, she put together in showing how she does her socks two at a time. But essentially what she does is she knits both of the cuffs separately and then places the cuffs onto the needle in the magic loop position and genius I think that is just sheer genius so um, that made total sense to me and here we are another reason I like I'm liking this so far is that um, I get to have matching socks I'm not usually a matchy matchy socks person until I started watching um, Earth Tones Girls, Denise of Earth Tones Girls, and the Earth, Earth Tones Girl podcast on YouTube. And Denise, the way she knits her socks are just, they, they always match. She takes great pride in, in starting and stopping her socks at the right time. I'm going to actually maybe think about reaching out to her to see how she does that. If, if it's too labor intensive, I'm, I'm probably not gonna do it anyway, but um, I was like, you know what? It, let me just try to, to do that. But with Magic Loop, especially if you're using um, yarn like this, this is the Regia Design Line by Arnie and Carlos. And the color is the very descriptive 03655. Um, but because I'm using two uh, different skeins, these are 50 gram skeins, 
it's pretty simple to figure out how to um, get them to match. So here we go. I love them so much. I have made the mistake of um, working on the second sock with the same yarn I worked on with the first sock. Um, that was a bit frustrating, and trust me, that will not be happening again. <laughs> but all in all, it's going really well. And maybe the next time I record, I'll have a new pair of socks done using the two at a time method. So thank you so much, Mina, for posting that video and for sharing um, sharing us your technique for doing your two at a time socks. So these are the only two um, whips in knitting that I'm, I'm actively working on. Um, there are a couple of things I have and I've put off to the side um, because I've been working on the things I'm about to show you right now. So first of all, what I'm not going to show you, it's sitting right in front of me, um, is my progress on Tour de Fleece. I believe Tour de Fleece ends this Sunday and um, I've made some progress, not as much progress as I would have liked to have made. Um, I did not spin every day like I had intended to, um, but I spun quite a bit. And I do believe that um, I have a couple of skeins already done. And I do believe that um, maybe in the next couple of weeks, I'll get all the things in my Tour de Fleece basket done. Um, so that's the goal. Even if I don't make it to the end of Tour de Fleece, um, I've put a big dent into my basket, which I'm going to post right here. My, this is my Tour de Fleece basket of all the things that I had intended to spend during Tour de Fleece. Okay, so um, let me share with you some of the um, work that I've been doing in natural dyeing. Um, so last year I had um, started experimenting with natural dye. Um, the host Lindsay of a Wooden Nest podcast was hosting a natural dye make along. And I started in, I went in um, full stride, and then life happened. And I just was not able to keep up. And um, so I kind of put my my natural dyeing um, plans off to the side while I, you know, took care of family business. And um, this was one of the skeins, which is um, from the hat that I'm actually, the hat Dana that I'm wearing. This is what I had left over. And again, this was dyed with uh, dandelion and turmeric and I'm really curious I want to try to recreate this next spring um, I'm will be dying with just some turmeric alone or maybe some turmeric and grass combined to see what um, color I could get but um, this is absolutely beautiful I absolutely love it so much and um, I love the way it knit up for the head Dana it's perfect for this time of year um, so yes, yeah, so this is one of my skeins from last year. And um, let me just share with you some of the things I've been doing this year because um, Lindsay is also hosting the Natural Dye Make Along again for 2019. And I have just, I've been really enjoying myself, learning so many things, experimenting with so many things. Um, had some epic fails, but I had some great successes as well. So since Fridays are my day to work at home, um, it's a perfect day to experiment with some natural dyeing. And my goal was to to, to dye just at least oh, 100 grams per week. 
which is basically one skein of yarn, just to experiment with different, different um, ingredients and combinations of ingredients and mordants and and uh, and uh, modifiers. And for me, I just try to experiment with one new thing a week, one new thing a week. And usually, whether it's a, a resounding success or an epic fail, I can I know why I can. Do some research and figure out what it is that went wrong in this process so that I can improve or either decide not even to use this particular um, product the next time I die. So let me just share with you some of the things I've died up and then share with you why um, I probably will or won't die again with that same process. So again, this was turmeric and dandelion definitely a winner um a winner because the color is color fast it's absolutely beautiful none of the color ran off on my fingers um or on my clothing as i was knitting it um i do believe that this color will last um i think the next time i wash this or soak it or either block it because i didn't block my hair i normally don't even block my hats but I might block this just so I can see if I get any um, extra dye that comes out. But I don't think that I will because it rinsed out pretty, pretty good. And um, yes, I think this is definitely a keeper. This skein is 100% um, wool <laughs> that I dyed with strawberries and paprika. So what had happened was I had a pint of strawberries that stayed in the refrigerator for a lot longer than they should have. So I decided, you know what, let me um, let me put these in some water and see what kind of dye I can extract from the berries. It was a beautiful color, but definitely not a deep saturated color. So I decided to add a little bit of paprika to redden up the dye a little bit more. And this is the color that I got. So again, this is strawberry and paprika on a non-superwash wool. This is also a non-superwash wool and the sun is really fighting with me today. So let me see, no. Mm. So this is grass. This was dyed with um, grass and the mordant or the uh, tool that I used to make sure that the color adhered to the yarn was alum. The same thing with the previous skein I just showed you. So this color did not, of course you can see it's not a vibrant green, it's almost like a, like a chiffon yellow. I'm not getting this camera to pick this up at all and that definitely is because of the sun so I apologize. I'm going to insert a picture of it so you can see exactly what the color is. But again, like I said, it is like a chiffon yellow. If I hold it up to here, maybe to here, mm, yeah. Trust me, it's a chiffon yellow. It's really pretty. Again, non super wash wool mordanted with alum and colored with grass. This here was also an unexpected ex um, color that I got. This um, was mordanted with alum and um, dyed with blackberry. So I expected to get maybe some pinks from this but this is completely, um, there's no pink at all in this. It's more so a beige, tonal beige. It's really pretty though. Almost like a light camel, camel. And you can see here at the bottom of the skein, definitely a little darker here, which is really nice. Um, So this is one I'm extremely excited about. This skein here was dyed with yellow and red onion skins. Isn't that beautiful? 
again mordanted with alum and dyed with purple I'm sorry red and yellow onion skins so pretty mm, smells good too no it does not smell like onions thank goodness it just smells fresh and earthy and also these napkins that I did some tie-dye dyeing with also with the um, with the onion skins and um, I am not sure how color fast this is going to be on the napkins um, only time will tell I will have to wash them and then um, see how well the color adheres to the cotton so these are just some um, some napkins that I picked up from the thrift store and I knew when I saw them that I was going to want to do some um, dyeing of them to experiment with some dyeing and I really really love the way they turned out so pretty if you're um, well I'll just tell you real quick to get the this I guess you can call it a tie-dye effect I just took each end of the napkin and I tied it in a really tight knot nothing fancy just a really basic but tight knot and um, and then I put it in the dye bath it sat in the dye bath for about an hour and then um, just the usual process made sure I rinsed all the dye out and um, Set them outside out of the sun to dry. That's another thing I learned that sun is the enemy of natural dye. So it's good to um, dry outside. Things dry quicker outside, but try to avoid having them in the um, direct sunlight. Okay, I think I got a couple more things to share. This is another beautiful skein. This was dyed with coffee. I was about to say black coffee as if there was another color coffee. <laughs> I absolutely love this. This is a deep, um, a deep camel. Um, I thought I, my good knit friend also said it reminds her of ginger. Yeah, there we go very pretty also mordanted with alum and um, and dyed with the coffee a very strong black coffee bath isn't that amazing so beautiful this is also a non super wash wool and finally um, this is one of those experiments. Oh, before I get into the last thing I want to share with you, I also did some napkins with the coffee grinds, and here they go. Definitely not as deep a color as the yellow, but still really pretty. Same technique was used for these. You can really see how this one did not take the dye as much. But again, still very useful and again I got these from the thrift store I think they were in a pack of uh, six for about two bucks maybe even less than that and I think they were having a sale too because that's pretty much the only time I try to go to the thrift store is when they're having a sale so that was a bargain a bargain craft as well okay so this, this is from last week's natural dye experiment. And let me, because it's kind of hard to show all these at once. Let's see. So these were mordanted or prepped with alum and dyed with paprika. So this was the plan. The plan was to get an orange. I was hoping to get any shade of orange, even if it was a coral, a light coral, I would have been really happy with that. So 
Um, these two schemes, I initially start, they initially did start out as a very light, really, really pretty coral. These skeins did also. However, I knew I wanted to experiment with some, um, some modifying. So I decided to modify these with iron. And so what I did was I dipped them in a, um, a homemade iron bath that I made. And it was amazing to immediately see the color on these skeins change into this beautiful camel color. But what I didn't, what I should have known was not to rinse what was once the beautiful coral skeins in with the skeins that had been modified with the iron. Because what happened is that these also turned um, into this interesting camel color, which is still pretty, but not the, what I had intended. And you can even see some of the orange peeking out from there so it's okay they're definitely like I said beautiful colors um, together they might end up in my um, my crochet blanket or in my knit blanket my mitered square knit blanket we'll see my cozy memories blanket we shall see but again it, it was fun it was fun and really interesting to see what the modifier did to the color Thank you. So, um, this week's dye experiment um, that I did this morning um, was with black beans. And some interesting things happened with the black beans, and I'm really excited to be able to share that with you, hopefully in a couple of weeks. So finally, I want to share with you an acquisition that um, just came in the mail a couple of days ago. Um, as you know, um, there has been so much um, talk going on about um, diversity in our crafting community. And because of that, those talks, um, I've been introduced to some um, new to me um, designers as well as um, dyers of yarn. So I believe it was um, Bad Betty Knits who um, mentioned this particular a dyer on her Instagram feed. So this is Onyx Fiber Arts. The name of the proprietor is Adria Forby and she can be found on um, Onyx Fiber Arts, onyxfiberarts.com um, and I will also link to her in the show notes. So um, like I said, I was looking at a, a listing that um, Bad Betty Knits um, put out on her Instagram feed. And I was introduced to this new to me dyer, Onyx Arts. And look at these beautiful skeins I was able to pick up from her store. As soon as I went to, to her store, I was just so captivated by the colors. Aren't they gorgeous? And this one in particular. I believe this is the one that um, I saw on Instagram and I immediately <laughs> grabbed my pad. So this color is burst. And what I love about this is that it's not, this color, it's, it's the exact same color that you see on her website. It's perfectly represented in her picture. So this is burst. And again, these are mini skeins of 87 yards and 20 grams. This one here is called Sprinkle City. 
This one here is called Peppers. I believe it's Peppers. It's faded to black and white, almost like a newsprint color. And this one is Veronica. Hold on. There's Veronica. So pretty. And finally, Moonstone. When I went on her website, she actually had a 100 gram skein of Moonstone and she paired it with um, a mini skein of this beautiful blue to go with it for heels, toes, and cuffs. It's, it's left a stain on my brain. I hope it's gone. I don't know if I can resist and say no, if it's still there. But excellent job, Adria. Excellent, excellent job. Um, and again, thank you, Bad Betty Knits, for bringing these new, um, talented uh, indie dyers to our attention. I would really like to feature, um, on a regular basis, new to me um, dyers and new to me um, uh, podcasters. Um, so as I come across um, new to me things, things that really uh, speak to my aesthetic and um, that I think you'll enjoy too, I will be sure to talk about them and even more so on the podcast. I'm just looking at this beautiful basket of goodness. Look at that. So beautiful. So much yarn, so little time. So yes, I think that's all I have to share with you as far as crafting and making. Um, other than that, not a lot going on. Um, just trying to stay um, healthy in mind and in body. Um, let's see here. I am still um, on this gray hair journey, and I have not talked a lot about this on the podcast. Um, this was a really difficult decision for me to decide to, to just to go gray because, I don't know, I think we just associate gray with being old, and and being old is not a bad thing along with with age comes wisdom and years of experience that can carry you through and help others so and I mentally knowing that is one thing but accepting it is a whole nother thing so I went to Pinterest and I had been building boards for um, natural gray hair um, how to go natural how to how to how to go naturally gray because my hair has been natural unpermed for years um, just different styles I can experiment with. So I've been experimenting, as you can see through my Instagram pictures, with um, lots of weaves and faux locks and um, some half wigs, some full wigs, some just a little bit of everything, um, just to get myself acclimated to the point of being able to accept my gray hair. And I think I'm almost there. I'm about 80% there. But I will tell you what kind of um, got me to on this journey of accepting the fact that I am almost 100% gray or definitely 100% salt and pepper. Um, a lady um, came up to me in the store one day. She said, I love your hair. It's just so beautiful. And I was like, thank you so much. I personally am trying to embrace it. I just haven't embraced it yet. I'm not quite sure if I'm ready to go gray. She was like, no, honey, it's not gray, it's platinum. And I said, oh, you know, I never thought about that. And so for some reason that just really stuck with me and um, I, can, I can rock the platinum. I'm pretty cool with that. Gray, not so much. Platinum, definitely. And then of all the um, positive comments I got on Instagram whenever I try a new style or do a new style. So thank you for that. And um, I guess I say all that to say that our words have so much power. The What we choose to say and how we choose to say it um, can make or break a person. Um, words can heal or words can tear down and so if I have any words of wisdom um, for the end of this podcast I will say um, to continue to be kind 
and gentle with your words. So thank you for joining me today. Um, as I share with you some of the things I've been working on, I hope you too are finding lots of joy um, in your crafting. Um, I've also been doing quite a bit of sewing, so perhaps on the next episode, I can share with you a couple of the um, things that I've been um, sewing, as well as a few um, pattern and fabric acquisitions I have acquired over the past couple of weeks. I'm really, really excited about um, my sewing um, as well. Don't forget to, um, if you liked this video, to like, hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber and you enjoy the podcast, please um, hit your subscribe button. And don't forget to leave a comment below so that you can enter the giveaway. And I'm going to, I'm probably going to leave this, the comment box open for about, um, for about a, let's see, maybe a month. I'll leave it open for three weeks to a month. I'll decide on that and then I'll um, post on Instagram when um, the giveaway st um, the giveaway starts immediately. So as soon as this um, goes up live, feel free to leave your comment. Um, and also I will post on Instagram um, when the giveaway will end. Um, yeah, and I think that's it. Again, thank you for joining me today. I hope to be back with you very soon to share with you some of the other makes I've been doing. And I hope that you are finding lots of joy in your making. And I hope you're enjoying your summer as much as I am. And never forget to spend just a little bit of time every day crafting and make it the best day ever. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.